Is it reasonable for God to say, hey, look, you can only accept, go to heaven if you accept Jesus Christ. However, if you're born in Afghanistan and you never get a chance to accept Jesus Christ, oh well, you burn in hell. I wasn't aware that people in Afghanistan can't accept him. Like, what is that point? Do you guys get it? Do you guys understand what's happening? Can someone, can someone help me to understand that? Can someone help me understand that? I don't get it. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jarrell, uh, the Red R. Kind of coming off for a little impromptu kind of video. Um, I didn't really want to have to make this video, but I feel like God placed it on my heart, and I don't really see anybody else talking about it, but it is something that needs to be addressed, I feel. So just to get into it really quickly, um, me and my wife, for probably the whole series, the whole show run of this show called Married at First Sight, um, which if you don't know, as its title suggests, it, it brings in a couple that I've never met, and they have ex a team of experts <laughs> that um, go through all these, uh, what they call rigorous tests to match two people together based on their questions and these interviews that they have with them. Personality, all these different things, walk of life and stuff like that. So they never see each other until the wedding day, and then on that day when they see each other, they commit to get married or not. And I think they do it for six weeks, they stay married, and then there's a decision day after they go on a honeymoon and all this stuff to see if they want to stay married or not at the end. So we've been watching the show. We're really into a lot of, I don't know, social dynamics of like with relationships. We've been asked to be on panels and speak about like our testimony and relationships and marriage and, um, and those things, especially as Christians um, in the past. So this show is really interesting. We do fast forward through things that we don't want to see in, in their relationships. But for the most part, there's a lot of really interesting like interpersonal dynamics and seeing different people's like personality types and the psychology of their relationships between ourselves we talk about. So there's just a lot of interesting things that we do while we watch the show and kind of break down the relationships and see where people are going apart or where they're coming together or what kind of advice they get or don't get on the show so it's interesting to us and we've been watching this for years a week or two ago there was an episode where their resident pastor who is um he's a real pastor his name is pastor cal on the show and he gives r advice but it's from like a spiritual informed kind of sense he is a christian pastor i think he has a ministry and they, he, he and his wife wrote books and stuff together so we've been watching him for years he's been on the show early on maybe season four around 2014 or something so it's been years like eight years or so that he's been on the show and like a a pillar of like the three experts that they have on so basically the the clip that i'm playing it's something that really bothered me and my wife so much like me so much where i was like i can't like, it makes me upset. We watched this pastor on this show, on this TV show, for years give, like, really sound advice, help couples to kind of avoid pitfalls and, like, being grounded in something greater. And sometimes talking about God, sometimes talking about faith, but not all the time. And this was the first real sign where I was like, oh, no, <laughs> uh, what is he, what kind of Christianity is he talking about? Because he is giving really bad advice and I feel really bad for the couple because it is potentially disastrous what he said. So without any further ado, I'll just roll the clip. I'm gonna react to it and I'll stop it maybe a few times to kind of comment on it. Um, and you'll see where the problems that this line of thinking in terms of relationships and marriage goes. Um, I guess I'd preface it by one other thing. These are two people, this, this couple that is in this clip, one of them is a Christian who never, he had like, he grew up with Christian faith and he's recently, more recently, taking it seriously. And it's more, it's informing his life a little bit more than it had in the past. So he's kind of like, what does God say about this? What does the Bible say? That's kind of, it's starting to direct his life. The other person is agnostic. They're both paired. They didn't know they were getting paired with each other. And one is a Christian, one is basically anti-Christian. And this, we will see the conflict and how, and why it really doesn't work most of the times, almost all the time. And I'll just play the clip from here. So I understand we've been having some um, discussions about religion. Yeah. We just like got into a topic of like heaven and hell and like Austin was being like very loving and comforting and just telling me that like, you know, even if it does end up that like I do die and I do go to hell, like he still thinks that he can like love me in the same way in this lifetime. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, 
It makes me feel less than. I don't think I'm going to help. Um, and you feel bad it's, it's hard it? to like be married to someone that isn't sure whether I do or not. See the struggle. And it just makes me feel really sad. <laughs> and do you believe in hell? Back no, not really. I mean, I don't know. To me, like being agnostic means that like anything could be true and anybody could be right. I like not knowing. Like I love right. that anybody right. could be right. But like right. to think that if he believes that after this we do go somewhere that we would go to different places. That kind of breaks you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm so glad you guys are talking to me about this. Uh... All right, so I'll take a stop. I'll stop it right there for a second. So like I said, she's kind of saying she's agnostic. And it's really interesting because she agnostics they kind of they come from a place of oh it's not pause sorry so they come from a place of they just don't know they can't say that there's no god but they can't say that there is a god they don't have enough evidence which is fine that's a lot of like i think in our walk we're all at that point at some part of our lives um a lot of us are in that area but she says she loves being agnostic for me i could never stay agnostic i would have to like find out is god real or is he not real and I would never want to be like, I'm forever in this I don't know phase. I never got that about people, why they wanted to stay in the I don't know. If you could know one way or the other, like, wouldn't you at least try? But anyways, um, side note, a little off track. It's so interesting that she says, I love not knowing and that anybody could be right. Anybody could be right. But then at the same time, she's like, my husband, who believes in God, believes that we won't be together after we die. So she says it's great that everybody can have their own belief and anybody could be right. But then when her husband has his own belief, she will not accept that. She's like, it makes me sad that you believe something different than me. Even though I want everybody to be able to believe whatever, it's, it's not, like, it seems like it's disingenuous. But anyways, we'll get back into this. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Neither you, Austin, you, Becca, or I have ever left this life and come back to say what happens. I don't think anybody has the power or authority to do that. Is that fair enough to say? Like the only thing I'd say about that is yeah. like, um, maybe yeah. God does? Maybe mm -hmm. Jesus has the authority to say something about that? So that's strange for a pastor to say that? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. But this you is know, what he said his church taught. I said my church is accepting of gay people, and I don't think that like, is thought of it. But if you don't accept Jesus, then you're going to hell. Right. Okay. Let me tell you something. There are people who say they accept Jesus and are still doing a whole lot of stuff that the Bible says will keep you out of heaven. So let's just get real with it. Except like, what does it have to do? Seems like a irrelevant point to bring that up. If he's talking about, like, how will you know that Jesus is the way to heaven if there are supposed Christians who live sinful lifestyles and they're practicing sin? and will end up apart from him because they reject Christ. Like that doesn't seem to be, like people sin, yes, the Bible is clear about sin and the consequences of it. So that doesn't like discredit that this husband believes in Jesus and that Christ is the way. It seemed like a strange point for him to bring up. Accepting Jesus is one thing, but accepting the principles of Jesus is something completely different, which are open to everybody. Is it reasonable yeah. for God to say, hey look, you can only accept, go to heaven if you accept Jesus Christ, However, if you're born in Afghanistan and you never get a chance to accept Jesus Christ, oh well, you burn in hell. I wasn't aware that people in Afghanistan were not allowed to accept Jesus and then they can't accept him. Like, what is that point? And why bring up Afghanistan? It's like the gospel is spread everywhere. And it's, it's not like even if you would look at a tribe or a place that wasn't like preach the gospel, it doesn't have anything to do with you know the gospel. Is it true? Do you receive it kind of a thing um because then you get into this whole other like straw man or like smoke screen of well what about people who haven't heard the gospel which i do have a bunch of things in scriptures that talk to that but this pastor shouldn't bring that up to a christian to be like well maybe you shouldn't believe in jesus or think that you need to follow him exclusively it's a very strange point for him to make going back to the like if there was tribes or people who weren't um preach the gospel like there, there are scriptures and things that talk about God reveals himself through creation. And there is, there's cases in the Old Testament 
without getting into a lot of the details because it's off the topic but cases in the old testament were people who didn't yet know christ because he he didn't come to earth and, and do his ministry yet people predate that the bible made special exemptions or opportunities for them to to receive and to have righteousness accounted to them they weren't righteous but god afforded it to them there are cases with like children and um babies and different things so there's a lot of points about God being a just God and not sending people to hell who didn't have a chance to receive him. So that's not really like the focus of the argument. When people bring that up, it's kind of more of a, a smokescreen or a distraction um, than anything else. But moving on. Is that, is that what I'm to believe? That's you not say, what I believe either. That's not what you believe? Okay, fine. Is it possible that you can see yourself to looking at different possibilities, Austin? Now, where are you on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm always open to like hearing new theories and one thing that like we kind of connected on was like the similarities between like christianity um judaism and islam is like absolutely yeah this was the part that was just so strange like is this a christian pastor who's counseling a christian who was married to a non-christian agnostic slash atheist really where he did not choose her knowing her faith but was paired with her and the christian past pastor is trying to or attempting to persuade the christian husband to consider alternative faith different faiths or different religions that are different from his biblical understanding of god like i don't understand like where that comes from how how does that make sense like I would understand if it was someone who was like, I don't believe in Jesus and I'm counseling you in a secular way and you're already wrong because you believe in God, but we'll try to work with you to like slowly inch you over. But to have it come from a Christian pastor's mouth that like, have you considered alternative, basically beliefs outside of Christianity, outside of the Bible, because of your wife who doesn't believe in any faith and is bothering her that you do have faith. That part is so sad to me that this man was coupled with this woman who doesn't believe his faith, he didn't choose her, and that the experts who paired them want him to, like, change his faith for her? That seems, that seems, like, literally crazy to me. Similarities between, like, Christianity, um, Judaism, and Islam is, like... Absolutely. So I am, like, somewhat, like, agnostic in the fact that, like, there are so many similarities, like, they could all be the same thing. Like, who's to say? Who knows? Like, I don't, that's for sure. But, like, I'm always open to learning more, to talking to people, to figuring this out. And regardless of how I grew up or like what I believe happens in the afterlife, I don't think any of that affects how I care for you. Like I can still love you, like regardless of whatever happens in the afterlife. And I'm thankful for that. But I'm just saying, like if he were paired like with a Christian woman, like he would be. He wasn't. We didn't pair him with a Christian woman because you were his man. You are his man. Period based on what exactly because they never really get into why they paired them specifically they used to show the matchmaking process where it would be like these are all the they'll have their picture they put them on a table they have a whole list of like 20 different potential couples and like this is a person who's very caretaking and giving and loving he has a strong family they have morals they have values and all these different things um and they don't show any of that on this season so i don't really know if it, they this, this is from I guess these couples are in Colorado. So I don't know if it was a thin batch of potential uh, suitors or if they maybe got lazy and they're not really matching people based on a lot of points and it's more surface. But this is something that is very, it's kind of, it makes me sad for this couple, especially for the, for the husband. They have a Christian man. He already has his beliefs. And it's not just about like believing in what, like the afterlife or, or in Christ, but it's, there are things about his life in terms of like intimacy and moving slower than his wife and how she's very promiscuous and very like quick at certain things and he wants to like take it slowly and he's, he said he always been that way it's very sad to watch a couple where you have a guy who's like i'm moving slower and i believe my faith has like informs my decisions and then also like in terms of intimacy i'm i'm us usually moving in a comfortable pace where i'm taking it slow and different things but the experts come in and it's, it's Pastor Cal and it's a couple other experts where they've gotten in their ear and they're like, well, can you be, basically the point is, can you be more like her? She wants to move faster. So what's making you go so slow? Can you do faster? Can you do this? Well, she doesn't believe in, in hell or she doesn't believe that she's going to be in hell. So is there anything that you could believe that's closer to her? It's like, if you had switched it, 
people would be livid with oh now she, they're making like if you switch the roles and said like the husband's moving fast why is the girl moving so slow to be intimate and they want her to be more fast and why are you moving slow and why don't you believe what he believes so change your beliefs and it's like I, it's like it's so sad that they're doing this to the these are real people's lives not just like a tv show so that's the thing that's really upsetting about like what they're doing with this and i don't want this video to get too long um so we just keep moving on okay i think that was the main clip and and i think that's the problem is he's calling the pastor's calling them a match like they're a match and i'm like based on what like you didn't really match them on things that are that important like this is their this is hugely like a, a pillar of your relationship is having very like a strong foundation in things that you agree about that impact your whole life and if it doesn't have that foundation that marriage is going to fall apart because it's like these are vital things to their life so like basically if they're so they have kids in the future let's say they're not a match because they're not going to raise the kids the same way and if the kids don't have that uniformity of thing about faith or or direction or how they're going to be raised then those things are just going to like rip the family apart like it's not a match because they don't they don't match it's not on like major things superficially maybe they're attracted to each other maybe his personality supports hers or it's complimentary but not on major things i mean this is why the bible is very clear that we're to be equally yoked and it causes all kinds of problems when you have relationships especially in marriage where it's like well we're not equally yoked which means like you're not moving forward together like tied together and moving at the same pace or believing the same things about major stuff if you're like one person is headed this way another person is headed this, even if it's like a slight deviation those things are going to make you end up in a separate place and the rings that bind you guys together are not going to be enough to keep you together it's going to just cause conflict and there will be no resolution because you don't even have a foundation for how you ultimately look at the world and resolve problems or issues so <clears throat> no i'm feeling this way because i want us to work so badly and that's what's going to make you work. That is the thing that you need to hold on to. The fact that you want this so badly. That is where you need to focus. I mean, he ends uh, he ends with like, because you guys want each other so badly that that's how you're going to make it work. And you can desire or want a partner so badly all you want. But if you guys don't agree on key things that make up like who you really are at the core, then you're not going to make it. You're just going to, it's going to be constantly conflict, constantly butting heads and headed in different directions. So that was the main thing I wanted to talk about with this clip. But I guess I'd ask you guys, seeing all that information and seeing how the couples kind of, how they're like different, they have different beliefs, but the expert comes in and he's trying to like change one side. Like, I don't know, what do you guys think about it? Like, you don't even have to be a Christian to see that there is a potential issue with that even like if you're atheist or, or agnostic i can't imagine that someone would be an atheist or someone would be an agnostic and they would want to be paired with a christian that believes that when they die they would go to heaven and the other person wouldn't that doesn't seem to be a relationship that's beneficial for either party like that doesn't like that doesn't make sense but i want to know what you guys think comment below if you agree if you think this is bad advice from a pastor if you think that this is not something that a pastor should be saying because uh, like i said for years we've watched this pastor in the show and i never really had any problems he, he's given really sound advice and i do know like i've known couples uh, me and my wife have where they weren't both christians when they met one was christian and one wasn't and they eventually ended up in the same place and the, and the other person got saved that's not like the ideal scenario it's not like missionary dating is the goal <laughs> the bible says it's really clear like that that's not the goal you you could be pulled down just as much as you might lift the other person up and you can't depend on that and if you get coupled and you're married and you have a bond and you have a covenant you're stuck like unless something crazy happens you're stuck where that person could just be constantly pulling you down and you may not you may not be enough to lift them out of it or to persuade them or anything like that so sure it happens but it's definitely not the goal. It's definitely not like the ideal situation or, or God's best. I guess, I mean, that's kind of it. I don't want to go too much further. This is already longer <laughs> than I thought it would be. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you think I am looking at it the right way, or if you have maybe a different perspective. I'll see you guys in the comments.